Thank you. It was a Thursday night. I was sitting in my couch, watching a movie I've seen a hundred times before. Music and lyrics with Hugh Grant and Drew Barrymore. I know that movie so well that I can slide into the couch, rest my feet on the table, my chin on my chest, balance my laptop on my stomach, just knowing when to flip the lid so I can enjoy the best punchlines of the movie. You know those movies? We all have them. Lying there so relaxed and a little bit too full from that extra piece of lasagna I'd actually saved for tomorrow. <laughs> I felt like a failure. Not in the sense that I never achieved anything, because I have. I've won gold medals at world championships. But it was so long ago, and I felt as a cheat and a con. Because when I tour the world, doing keynotes and motivational talks, they always revolve around setting big goals and being brave. And I hadn't been brave for ages. And suddenly, I felt like a fraud. So I sat up, turned off the TV and thought about it. I need a new goal, and I need it now. It has to be big, and it has to be really, really scary. And you might ask yourself, why is it important for a goal to be really scary? Well, if it doesn't trigger a little bit of nervousness and anxiety, it isn't important enough, and you won't go that extra mile when the going gets tough. I needed a goal that was really big, something I really, really wanted, and something that would hurt if I didn't achieve. So I thought, what do I do now? I think the best, way, best place to start is to start to search your mind for things that you love. What do I really enjoy? And I can tell you what I enjoy. I enjoy giving talks and then making people laugh. That is, my, that, that is my food, that is my energy. I love it. So I thought, oh, making people laugh, yes. Having that moment with them, you can see them, tears streaming, their belly laughing, dopamine fills the room, we're having this experience together, yes. I thought, that's a good place to start. So now I just need to find an occupation that involves a lot of laughter and a challenge. This is a no-brainer, isn't it? I thought, Stand-up comedy, yeah. As soon as I said it out loud, I could feel the little hairs rise on my arm. I thought, ooh, that's scary, that's nice. I like it, I'm frightened of it. This is it, this is it. And now, stand-up can be many things. Stand-up can be going down to your local bar, asking for five minutes at an open mic, inviting three or four of your best friends, asking them to cheer you on. And while that is really scary, and I salute the ones of you who have tried, and I beg you, if some of your friends want to do this, go cheer them on. I thought, that's not big enough for me. It has to be even scarier. And to be honest, I blame the soft couch, the lasagna, and the warm sweater I was wearing for what happened next. Because, as you know, when you're comfortable in your home, you're well-fed, you're warm, you're safe, that little part of your brain, the lizard brain, the one that alerts you in case of danger, he goes to sleep. He knows that nothing's gonna threaten you now. There's no reason to be awake. Little did he know that I felt brave that night. So I went to Google. You can always go to Google. No harm done. Just browse a little. Big concert venues in Denmark. I'm just looking. And I did. And I found this one. This is glass sailing at Tule Gardens. And I thought to myself, that's a nice place for a debut. That's just the room for me. It holds a little bit under a thousand seats. And I thought, yeah, that's going to be loads of fun. So I quickly went to Tuli's webpage, found their email address, and wrote them. Hi, Tuli. How much to rent glass sale? I think in a year. 
I can write a show in a year. It'll be easy. Swoosh, off with the mail. As soon as I pushed the button, my lizard brain sprung to life. And he was shouting, what have you done? You're a lunatic. You don't know how to write comedy. You're not even funny. You are going to be a laughing stock, and you won't even get any speaking gigs after this. This is a disaster. You're crazy. Stop yourself. As you can imagine, I wasn't relaxed or tired anymore. So I thought, I have to go to planning mode right now. I'm already behind schedule. <laughs> so um, I got out a pen and a piece of paper, and I started writing. First of all, I set this little challenge up for myself that I didn't want to reuse any old jokes I've ever done. I thought, it's also a challenge to see, can you write comedy? New jokes. Second thing was, I want it to be intelligent humor. You can always make people laugh by just making them really uncomfortable. I thought, that's not for me. Third thing was to fill the room, sell every seat. Of course I can, no problem. And the last thing was, I thought, duration, hmm, how should it be? Well, I think two times 45 minutes. I can do that. And actually, my plan was to write two times 30, and hopefully people would laugh for 15 minutes a set. <laughs> I went to bed, but I couldn't sleep. The next day, I woke up and I thought, okay, I need to find stuff that's funny. And you know, when you search for funny, nothing is funny. I got more and more desperate as time went on. And at three o'clock in the afternoon, I was just staring into the thin air, just thinking, what have you done with your life? You've risked everything on a dare with yourself. But the phone rang. I answered, and there was a male voice at the other end saying, uh, is, uh, is this Meta Block? I said, yeah. He said, this is from Tuli. Um, did you send us a mail last night? He sounded like it must have been a mistake. And I said, yeah. And he said, oh, I'm so sorry. You know, Crazy Christmas Cabaret usually has the room this time of year. And while they usually have one day off a week, next year, they need that day for rehearsal, so the room isn't free. You have no idea how relieved I was. <laughs> I really tried to sound depressed when I said, "Ah, I'm so sad, I was so hoping, but in reality, I was smiling from ear to ear, throwing punches in the air, I was kind of like, yes, this man just saved me for making a fool of myself. Wonderful. And just as I thought we were about to end the call, he said, but, you know that but, don't you? Means that he thinks he has a great offer, I might not agree. He said, but, the concert hall is free. Are you kidding me? The concert hall. It holds 1,600 seats. I heard myself say, that's a good idea. <laughs> Hung up the phone and panicked completely. And I thought, damage control, damage control. What to do, what to do. OK, first thing I need to do is I need to save my economy. Put the tickets for sale. And then I started calling companies I'd done talks for in the past, asking them if they would be willing to buy 100 tickets to my show if I gave them a free talk the year after. Three companies said yes within the first hour. And um, I'm ashamed to say that what I did next was a little bit dishonest, because I thought, I need sales to go even faster. I need publicity. So I called the radio and pretended to be my friend. <laughs> I did. Hi, I don't know if you've heard, but you know, the roller, Meta Block, she just wrote and produced a one-woman show. She just set the tickets for sale, and she's already sold 300. They're flying. And they were like, wow, really? Do you have her number? Yeah. 
they called. I was on the radio, I was on TV, I was in all the major newspapers and magazines, and I sold 1,500 tickets in no time. Just... <laughs> Just one teeny tiny problem, I didn't have a show yet. I hadn't written anything. But with that amount of pressure, I had just what I needed to get working. I worked on that show for every waking hour of that year. And I remember standing behind the curtain in the concert hall, looking at the little screen showing me that the room was filling, trembling, with my 90 minutes of carefully rehearsed comedy, asking myself, why? Why do you do stuff like this? Why does it have to hurt so much? And I think it does because when you push yourself, you grow. And that's an awesome feeling. So next time you're sitting at home late at night and you get a crazy idea and you can feel that little spark, Nurse it into a flame, because it can end up changing your life. Thank you.